Hey everyone, welcome to a surprise Facebook Live kind of feed drop here on a Thursday afternoon. We wanted to drop in to talk a little bit today about some owl pellets. We are really excited to um, really start our new online store. There's a link here in the description of this video that you can check out if you're interested. And on there, we have available owl pellets that we actually collect from the birds that are staying here at the Raptor Center, which are really a fantastic opportunity to be able to see and kind of participate in some of the science that people are doing all the time. Being able to actually see these pellets and see what birds are eating is phenomenal. So I want to tell you a little bit about what goes into those pellets. So this is one of our resident great horned owls. She is an education bird, so she lives here permanently at the Raptor Center, teaching people about her species. So this this is a great horned owl that we call Lois. She's been here at the Raptor Center for about 20 years now. I'm gonna give her a little piece of food here first because we're looking around. Um, and then I'm actually going to give her a whole dead mouse here in a minute. So a few things to point out. So like all owls, she has these amazing huge eyes. Um, they also have these very large feet. You can see those talons on the ends of those toes. Perfect for grabbing onto small animals like mice and rats and squirrels, even things like skunks or even larger animals like that. So great horned owls are incredible hunters that are eating a huge variety of foods. So they're using those tools to actually find and catch them. And then of course they have this curved sharp beak for actually tearing their food into pieces. However, if they find an animal that's small enough, like a mouse or a shrew or a vole, something like that, they can actually swallow it whole. So let's take a look. It looks like we have a good kind of number of people on. So let's actually take a look at what it looks like if this owl were to actually catch a whole mouse. I'm gonna hide it behind my back here for a moment until she has her wings all tucked in. So you can see it's getting a little bit past the lunchtime. We're ready to eat some food. So for this bird, she just needs to actually turn her head a little bit further away and then I will hand her that mouse when she is all ready to go. Um, and she's going to take this and we're gonna actually see how she's able to use her, possibly her feet and her beak. Go a little bit farther than that, ready? She went, actually, I think I'll take this to a perch. Here we go. So she just swallowed it whole down the hatch. So she took it in her beak. You can see up close, you can see that curved, sharp beak. Just still kind of working on getting it all the way down there. So she took that whole mouse. She actually swallowed it whole. Just like when we eat food, it's going to go down into her stomach to be digested or kind of broken down. Now, when she ate that mouse, there was not only the meat like a lot of us might eat, but there were also the organs, the eyeballs, the brain, the liver, the all that good stuff, the heart, all the good stuff. There was also the skin and the fur and the things like the claws and teeth, things like that. So her stomach is going to break all of that down over the next uh, eight to 12 hours or so. So sometime later tonight or early tomorrow morning, she'll be all done fully digesting or breaking down everything that she ate today. And then her stomach is gonna do something pretty incredible. It's going to take all of the fur from that mouse and wrap it around all of the undigested bones. And she's actually going to cough it back up. We call it casting an owl pellet. And so those pellets look a lot like this. I'll put her back here in a moment so we can actually see what's on the inside of these. Here's a smaller one. So you can see there's kind of fur on the outside and then bones kind of all in here. Here's yet another one. The color kind of depends on what animal they were eating. So some of these whiter ones might be from a kind of fluffy white rat or mouse. Maybe some of the darker colored ones might be from a different color of animal. I think this is actually a pellet from our resident barn owl who usually tends to have this kind of darker color in her pellet. So that might also include some feathers from chickens or things like that. So you can actually see what those actually look like. So that's what they're actually coughing up. If you can imagine doing that every time you ate, swallowing a whole big sandwich and then having to cough up part of it later, it'd be pretty incredible to do, I think. But that is how owls are actually digesting their food. Everything that they've broken down and digested, they'll deal with the same way that we do. It'll finish going through their intestines and they will eliminate the waste that is created, just the same as we do. But that pellet is pretty incredible. Now, other raptors, our daytime raptors, like our eagles and hawks and falcons and vultures, 
their stomachs are actually acidic enough. They're strong enough to break down the bones of the animals that they eat. So other raptors do also make pellets, but they only have the fur or the feathers or the fish scales of whatever it is that they were eating. In fact, one of my favorite raptors is not here in North America. It lives kind of across um, parts of Europe into Asia, especially in the big mountain ranges called the bearded vulture, which is a vulture where about 90% of his, its diet is just bones. They only eat bones. So they're usually showing up at the end of kind of scavenging off of a dead animal when all the other vultures and other scavengers have come through and eaten everything else, they'll show up and eat the bones. Incredible, definitely worth a good checking out next time you have a break. Check out bearded vultures, one of my favorites. They only eat bones. So I'm actually going to put her back on this perch over here. I'm just gonna slide over. And then we're actually going to take a look at a couple of these owl pellets a little bit closer up. It's just hard to kind of get the camera focused when I have a bird on the glove. Let me just pop her back here. Because there has to be more food. I should scroll back too. If anybody has any questions as we're talking, definitely feel free to put it in the chat. But I wanted to see if I could show you without blocking her too much. One of these, otherwise what I'll do is I'll turn the camera around so you can see it. Maybe that's what I'll do. Pardon the shaky camera here for just a moment while I... And I'm just going to turn this around. So you can see here on the ground, we have these, here, sorry. Stay in landscape mode here. <laughs> Sorry for the slight technical difficulties as I arrange this. But here is that barn owl pellet. So you can see it has kind of these fur. Here's some little bits and pieces. So these pellets have actually been autoclaved. So they've been cleaned in basically a big machine that gets really, really hot that uh, really can make sure that these are really nicely cleaned. So that's why I'm touching them with my hands, though I I do always recommend people wash their hands very thoroughly after touching any of these or using gloves, of course. But you can see um, that these are, um, you can see all the fur and you can see the bones kind of sticking out. I'm actually going to pull this one open a little bit so you can see on the inside we have more of this fur and these bones. This one actually has a tiny little piece of pea gravel in it. So you can see a rock. Uh, most of our birds, they live on a kind of substrate or the, the kind of material that they're usually perching out on top of is usually pea gravel. So it looks like maybe a tiny piece of pea gravel got in there. But here we have one of my favorite things to find in these owl pellets. This is actually a skull. And the really cool thing is if you actually do buy owl pellets from our gift store, they do come with a guide that actually helps you figure out what these different bones are. So this is, as I'm looking at it, kind of trying to untangle it one-handed here, but you can see the teeth of this rat. So this is a rat skull. Let me see if I can untangle some of this. I poked in here a teeny bit ahead of time to see make sure that it had some nice big bones in it, but I didn't know I was gonna get a whole skull. Incredible. So here we have this rat skull. You can see these enormous teeth. Rats and other rodents, they have these front teeth, these incisors, both on their upper and lower jaws that grow almost continuously. So you can see how long those are, perfect for chewing. So that these rodents are really good at gnawing into all sorts of materials, that's those long teeth. And then back here are their molars. Oh, here, I'm going to keep in focus. These nice flat molars that are great for chewing on things. You can see where their nose would be. Their eyes would be kind of back here. And here in the back, looks like this is either cut or this might have been ripped apart by our owl. So this is actually kind of the back. This is the brain case. This is where the actual brain of that rat would have been. But it's kind of shortened off, kind of ripped apart. You can actually maybe see the kind of holes there. It actually looks like it was right across one of those kind of suture lines in the skull, which is really interesting. Let me see. Here is the lower mandible. This is one half of that kind of lower jawbone. So this would have been the, the left side of this rat's jaw. So here you can see again those molars and then this long tooth. Let me see if I can do this one-handed. Okay. Oh, I can almost get it. So, okay, what I'm trying to do, <laughs> one-handed, which is maybe a poor choice, um, but here on these rat skulls, this really cool thing is once they've been kind of digested and processed here, you can see these front 
this front tooth here, it actually goes all the way back, back here is where it actually starts growing. So I can actually pull it out, get it most of the way out. Here's it most of the way out. Sorry again, trying to do this one-handed is kind of silly of me. But you can see how far out that tooth is actually growing. So these incredible rodents, I know we talk a lot about how great of raptor food they make, but really they are an incredible group of mammals who have these really specialized teeth for gnawing. So these are really highly successful animals who are able to um, kind of adapt to a lot of different situations, lots of different circumstances because of these gnawing teeth. Let me see if I can get this off all the way. I'd love to show you the base of this tooth. Haha. -ha. So this is how long that, that rat's tooth actually is. So it starts growing back here, and then on the front here, it's kind of got different hardnesses. So they are kind of self-sharpening. So rodent teeth are kind of self-sharpening. They kind of form this little chisel point. So that is a rat's actual tooth compared, you can see it's kind of the full length of that jawbone that we were looking at. Incredible. Let's poke around this one a little bit more. See what else we got. I think we have the front of, ooh, this is fun. This is kind of the, um, the kind of bones of the ear of this rat. Let's see if we've got, I think we might have the back of the skull in here. <laughs> I was trying to set up the tripod earlier so I could try to do this with both of my hands, but instead, and just kind of digging through here one-handed. Yeah, it looks like we have the rest of the skull in here, a few more pieces of the skull. Skulls are really fascinating, to me especially. I am a huge, um, <laughs> a huge skull nerd. Um, so they have these really cool kind of suture lines on them where they're actually kind of spliced together. So they're made out of several bones. It's not just really the one bone, it's several bones that are kind of sutured all together. So this kind of nice little like wavy lines that you see on a skull are actually where all those bones come together which is a really, again, very important part of mammal development. For us mammals, that kind of thing is really important. So our skulls also have those really cool zigzag lines all over them, secretly. So that is an owl pellet. So all of this was from that one owl pellet. Not this part. So we had all sorts of bones. I saw another one. I saw a little rib bone in there. Got a couple little pieces of rock. So she might have um, this particular barn owl who this a pellet was from that I happened to pick. Um, sometimes what she'll actually do is she'll take her nice chunk of rat and she'll actually do what's called caching where she'll bring it down into a particular corner of her enclosure and kind of hide it uh, in the corner on the ground. So maybe she picked up a few pieces of pea gravel that way. Here is a nice leg bone. You can see this cool joint where it kind of attaches in. Like I said, if you're looking at this and going, okay, I would have no idea what any of those are, no worries. If you actually purchase one of our pellets or a few of our owl pellets, you get a guide that will help you figure out not only which bones you're looking at, but what kind of animal they came from. So you can see all the different kinds of bones that uh, the animals that these owls may have been eating look like. So you never know what you're going to get, too, which is the other reason why I always think these are so fun to dissect um, and to hear about people dissecting, too, is that you never really know what's going to show up in these pellets. Certainly, we know here at the Raptor Center what we're feeding a lot of these birds, but we do also collect the pellets from birds that have arrived down in the clinic, um, so they might have some interesting things. Um, <laughs> and um, you never really know what part of the animal you're going to find. Like I said, I always really enjoy when I find the skulls, but I also really enjoy when I find a tail. You'll sometimes see a little string of tiny little vertebrae or tiny little spine bones all lined up in a little row, all curled into a little circle in the middle of a pellet, which I always think is incredible. So those are owl pellets. This was our great horned owl who was eating that mouse. So she will produce one of these pellets later tonight when she's all done digesting her food. I'm going to scroll through here and just make sure that there weren't any questions where we were going. But thank you all for joining us on kind of a random Thursday afternoon. We got that online gift store up and running. and We were really excited about it. And we thought, hey, what better way to tell people that they can actually buy owl pellets than to watch an owl make one or kind of start to make one. It's a pretty long process. We didn't think everyone would want to watch for the next 10 hours while she digests her food, but hey, this way we can see her doing some preening of those lower leg feathers while we're at it. 
<laughs> All right, everyone. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Again, hopefully you enjoyed a really quick video about owls and owl pellets. I'm sure we will be seeing you all again soon, but make sure to check out that link in the description of this video. Thanks, everyone. Have a great rest of your day.